Hi guys, it's Gospel here. I'm a YouTuber, a medical doctor, and also a student coach. Today I'll be talking to you about planning. So let's delve right into it. Now, if you've not watched my video on goal setting, you would actually want to watch that video first of all, before you watch the video on planning. So what is planning? Planning in simple terms is actually just creating a roadmap towards achieving your goal. Basic creating a roadmap towards achieving your goal. Now, setting goals and you know making all the targets, the aims and everything will not really do much for you if you don't have a concrete plan towards how you want to achieve those goals. So it's very important to talk about planning. Research, research has shown that those who plan stand better chances of actually achieving their goals than those who just set goals and have no concrete plan towards achieving those goals. So there are some things you want to know about planning. The first is you want to establish short-term and long-term goals. Now, long-term goals can be in months, in a year, two years, but your short-term goals typically will be in weeks and in days. What do you want to achieve? Within the next one year, where do you want to be? The best answer to that would probably be you want to be in the next level of your medical school training. But in between all of that, you have months, you have weeks, you have things that you want to do. Let's say you want to apply for a scholarship. You want to get into an NGO. You, there are things you want to do. Those might fall into your short-term goals. More short-term plans will include, you want to pass a test. There's a test in three weeks. You have an exam in two months. Those are short-term plans focusing on your academics now that you want to have in view as against the long-term plan. A long-term plan, again, an example would be your professional exam. Let's say you're just starting a class and the professional exam is 10 months away, 11 months away, one year away. That's an example of a long-term plan. So you want to break everything you're doing into short-term and long-term. Number two, list all the courses you are doing that semester. This is the second item on the agenda. Make a list of all the courses. I've always told persons that awareness is very important while you're in school, more so medical school. Make a list of all the courses. You know, it's funny sometimes when we're in school that some persons happen to focus a lot on, let's say, anatomy and physiology and do very little on biochemistry or courses like histology because probably lecturers are coming more for those other courses or they just have this like and passion towards the other courses. So there's a tendency to neglect other courses. No, make a list of all the courses. So all of them are within your visual field and nothing is left out. Everything must be within your visual field. So make a list of all the courses you're doing for that particular session or that semester. Number three, figure out what you need to do for each subject or exam. Now, different subjects, different courses will require different skills and strategies towards passing them. For some courses, you might want to watch a lot of videos. For instance, in pharmacology, if you're in 400 level, Whatever level in your school you get to do pharmacology, you'd be aware that there are Kaplan videos, which are very, very useful and very important if you want to get a good grasp of pharmacology. For some other courses, you have audiobooks that you can listen to and would actually help you so much to appreciate the content of that course. So basically, you want to count the cost for each course and then you are aware of it so you can go ahead to pay the price to be excellent in all the courses. So yes, count the cost for each course. Number four, plan towards each component of your exam. Now, I've heard students say, I'm poor when it comes to writing theoretical exams. I'm not very sound with MCQs. Now, what this means, there are some things that affect the outcome of exams. For instance, if you want to do very well in MCQs, your knowledge base has to be good in two dimensions, quantity-wise and quality-wise. Quality speaks of how well do you know what you know, and quantity talks of how much, how vast are you, because you can read so much and know only very little part of that course very well, and then the 50% you do not know, 90% of the questions in the MCQ exam actually comes out from the remaining 50%. So you see, the quantity of your knowledge, the vastness of your knowledge should be much, and also you have to know things very well. That's one of the ways you do well when it comes to multiple choice question exams. Theoretical exams, the quantity also matters, the quality matters, and also presentation counts a lot. So you want to break, out, break the courses down into the different components and do the required preparations to make sure you ace all the components of the exam. Number five, 
prioritize your list. Now, when it comes to making priorities, when I was in preclinical house in medical school, I know I loved physiology so much. I enjoyed it. I'm using the term love, it's supposed to be like, but I was really just passionate about the course. And yes, I became best in physiology, but I noticed some things were wrong. I neglected biochemistry for the longest time. I read anatomy quite all right. I read the other courses, but I really did not flow so much with biochemistry. And I realized towards the exam, I was under immense pressure as against physiology and anatomy, where I just had to do little revisions. But repeatedly, luckily for me, there were breaks now when the exams came. So I had time to quickly go and review biochemistry. And even in preparation for my professional exams, I had to do a lot of reading and watching videos for biochemistry. That's because I did not prioritize it. Now, the wiser thing I would have done looking back now would be the course you know you are deficient in. That's probably the course that should even have most of the time in your reading schedule, not the one you like so much. Because the one you like so much, you're going to enjoy reading it. You'd actually remember it much more than the course you do not like. So prioritize your list. One of the things you want to achieve is balance. You don't want to be a professor of anatomy in quote. Meanwhile, there is deficiency in physiology, biochemistry, histology, embryology, or any of the other courses at all. So make sure you prioritize your list. Number six, Divide the available time in the week into study blocks. At a later time, I will tell you how to fill those study blocks, but the idea behind creating study blocks is you want it to become a habit. Your body should be able to align that between 4 p.m. and 10 p.m. every day is meant to study. So that's like a study block time you've set apart. Every other thing can fit into the other times you have based on how you've designed your plan. Now, I know you would have engagements. There might be meetings. There might be associations you belong to that you'd have to pay requisite attention to, yes. But these meetings will not be every day of the week. But by default, when those meetings are not there, you should have a time set apart daily to study. So it becomes a habit. It becomes a routine for you. Number seven, reserve time for non-academic activities. Please create out time for friends, for family, and also time to rest. Very important. You're not just going to be termed successful if you're only good academically. The other areas of your life needs to be balanced while you're going through medical school. So create out time for these other things and make sure that you arrange your priorities appropriately. Number eight, it's time to fill in your study blocks. Now that you know the non-academic activities you have to engage in, the time you have to spend with family, the time you have to spend with friends, it's now time to fill in your study blocks, depending on how you want to arrange your plan. Some people recommend interleaving. So let's say you read different courses in your personal plan on alternate days. Another form of interleaving will be going week by week. So this week you're reading a particular course. Next week you're reading a particular course. Now this plan is independent of what you're taught during lectures on that particular day. But basically, fill in the study blocks. Decide what will be occupying the six hours, four hours, or eight hours you've decided to study every day. Number nine, assess your current schedule. Now look at everything from a bird's eye view with a bigger picture in mind. Look at the schedule. How much time have you dedicated to studying? How much time have you dedicated to entertainment? How much time have you dedicated to honing your leadership skills? Probably learning a skill you want to learn while you're in medical school. Look at everything and decide which one needs to be given more attention. Are you spending too much time on entertainment? Are you mindlessly scrolling through social media? Are you spending time binge watching movies? These things in themselves are not bad, but they may not be very profitable to you in the meantime. So make sure that you assess your current schedule and where you need to make adjustments, please make necessary adjustments and increase the time for what needs to be increased while reducing or decreasing the time for what needs to be decreased. Number 10, consider your learning style. Now people learn differently. I know some persons who need to be in class to gain everything from a course. It's not like they're not smart, but it's just their pattern. I know some persons who, they don't mind, they may not be in class, but they have a way of catching up. I know others who do very well with videos. In fact, there's someone that just made lecture notes from videos. He or she may not bother so much about the textbook, but make his or her notes from videos, augment the class notes, and he was doing very, very well. There are some who are audio learners, they have to record 
as they read the record part of the notes, you know, save the recordings, and while they are working on the way or while they are just busy, they keep listening to it over and over again. So know your learning style and capitalize on it while giving room to augment the other learning styles that are available. Because you will get to times in the medical school where your learning style may not suit into a particular course or a particular level. So at that point, you have to do the necessary to make sure that you're not lagging behind or you're not failing because your acclaimed learning style is not what is in use in that particular stage. Number 11, reflect upon your work ethics. You need to be honest with yourself. If you're a procrastinator, Sorry I'm tagging you that way, but you get what I'm saying. If you know, most times, you tend to push things over to the next day, to the next week. What you might want to do in that case is to create a, just create extra time in your study blog. Let's say you plan Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and you keep Saturday aside for anything that you procrastinated. You saw them out on, you saw them out on Saturday. But if you know you're very optimal, you don't procrastinate, good and fine, fire on on all what you need to do and even get ahead of the class, get ahead of the lecturer, just know yourself. For the procrastinator, there is room for change. That's not your identity. So while you create time for the, ex for the spillovers, you want to make sure you're tilting towards a very efficient student as you grow in your medical school journey. Number 12, make the most of your scheduled off time. Now, all that time you made, made to rest, interact with family and friends, do not spend the time being anxious about what's happening with your books or about medical school. Actually enjoy the time, rest, recuperate, relax, enjoy your friendship, the communion with your family and whatever you have to do so that when you're coming back, you're coming back with mental energy, equity, refreshed and you're ready to fire on. Number 13, take short breaks and stick to them. Research has shown that people have the most apt attention span for about 40 minutes. After that 40 minutes, the attention span tends to reduce drastically. I know some people have more longer, but generally speaking, it's recommended you take five to 10 minute breaks after such duration of reading. Take a stroll, again, avoid your phone, avoid social media. You might just want to spend 10 minutes doing something and you end up spending two hours. So look for an alternative. Probably take a stroll, listen to a music, just relax your mind a bit and get back into action. Number 14, stick to the schedule, stick to your plan. There will be no point at all trying to create a plan if you do not stick to it. It can even lead to frustration. Sometimes you just feel like, let me just dump this plan and start working literally like a scalar quantity without direction because of the guilt tripping that comes with not fulfilling your plan, not achieving your plan. So you want to stick to the schedule. And one thing that will help you to stick with your schedule is appropriate time management. So in the next video, which you will see at the end of this video, I'm going to be talking about time management. You want to make sure you listen to that video to know how to manage your time so that all your plans, everything you've written down, you actually achieve them. So thank you. If you know you like this video, please give this video a thumbs up share with your friends, share with your colleagues, and click on the next video to know how to manage your time effectively. I'll see you next time.